If you take offense to this, because I can't say don't take offense to it, hear me through. I go into a shelter. I'm going to use round numbers. And uh, Chris, who's doing the emergency presentation, actually reminded me of this yesterday over dinner. You go into a shelter. In that shelter, there's 100 dogs. There's a lot more, by the way, but there's 100 dogs, okay? Out of those 100 dogs, 90 of them are nice dogs. You know, maybe, so they, maybe they're a little, you know, barky or something, but they're nice dogs. I can just adopt them out, and they just ended up in the shelter through no bad luck of their own. Three have killed other dogs, maybe really attacked a person badly, and then there's some that are old and decrepit and whatever, or sick or whatever. Notoriously, rescue organizations and people like us who love dogs start to focus on the dogs that have the issues, right? We say, oh, you know, he killed that dog, but you know, God, he was just like pent up for so long and he came from a really bad breeding and you know, his owners weren't really giving him the structure he needs and you know, I just feel bad for him. He just deserves another chance. So just hear me through on this one. So what I usually say to people at the shelter when they say, can you help me with that dog? And I say, I'm happy to help you with that dog because I can manage that dog. I can show you what the dog needs. But I say, in the meantime, Pick one other dog out of the 90 that hasn't done anything wrong, and we're going to kill that one. Because in shelters, dogs die. And it's a decision we need to make. If this dog killed another dog, and okay, he did something wrong. You know, he was, he was, it was a little dog that ran in front of him, and he had his high predator, he was cooped up, he was bred from bad lines, he came from fighting lines, and he killed that dog but there's another dog who didn't kill anybody. But rescues notoriously don't focus on that. I always say, pick the low-hanging fruit. And I don't care if this, I've seen the best pit bulls, right? People say, you don't like pit bulls. Bull, I love pit bulls, but I know what they are, you know? I probably hate more Malinois than pit bulls because I know more of them, you know? <laughs> You know, people would say, oh, you know, blah, blah. I say, well, I hate more white people than black people because I got more white pe friends or, you know, I, I know more, <laughs> what, whatever it is. Like, I, if I know more of you, I'm going to hate more of you. Um, <laughs> so with pit bulls, I know, what, I know what their drives are. Like Malinois have an incredibly, insanely over-the-top drive that's prey-driven. I, I see it all the time. They're like chasing cars, chasing bicycles, lunging, barking, da-da-da. Pit bulls notoriously, from a terrier line, are dog reactive. They're, that's just who they are. Now, I've seen pit bulls that are completely bulletproof. You can put them in front of any dog, they won't do anything. Rescues tend to focus on dogs with problems because why are you in rescue to solve problems? Because you have an emotional deficit. I, I ran a nonprofit, okay, so I can say this. I have an emotional deficit where I want to make everything right, right? So I want to take that dog, and I took, dogs, I took a dog, Zeus. Zeus was one of the most aggressive dogs I've ever seen. I took him out. He was a Malinois Kita mix. Just put those two together for a second. Um, nobody wanted this dog. I trained this dog for a month solid every single day, three times a day. I did nothing but train this dog. And I placed him in a home with a small child, like a young boy, and a husband and wife. This dog had the greatest life. In the time it took me to save that dog, train that dog, and place that dog, I could have easily saved 20 dogs. Easily, right? So a lot of times, if we love dogs more than we love our ego, we will have to say, I'm sorry, you have to go so that I can save you guys. It's like, you know, if I have one person I'm trying to put in a life raft, uh, you know, the ship is sinking and I put one person in a life raft and that person's screaming out of control going, hey, and every, every time I put another person in a life raft, they throw that person off the life raft, I might drown that guy so I can save six more people in that life raft. My online course for dog trainers is one of the most complete courses available anywhere. It contains over 25 hours of instruction, 48 different lessons containing more than 150 videos, including lecture and hands-on instruction. Quizzes along the way to keep you motivated and on track. Plus, you get lifetime access to the entire course in case you need to check back in. The entire course can be done online and you receive a certificate of completion when you finish. The course uses shelter dogs with real behavioral issues that we analyze and train along the way. Real people learning real dog training skills so that you can become a better dog trainer. 
The course comes with a 100% money back guarantee if you're not satisfied. Check it out today at robertcabral.com.